It's time once again for America's favorite show, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Brought to you by DrFloyd.com. The next stop in our flashback to discover why Dr. Steve shot Dr. Floyd with a mysterious weapon takes us to the middle of the San Francisco Bay on June 4th, 1962. It is here we find evil mastermind Dr. Steve and his sock-shaped assistant Fidget hiding near the docks on the shores of the infamous Alcatraz Island. Okay, Fidget, just stay crouched down here until I tell you. What am I doing here? Oh, don't worry about our ship. It's parked on the back side of the island and well hidden. No one will notice it. Besides, I don't plan on being here long anyway. What are we We're here to swipe some of the most famous keys in the world. The keys to Alcatraz, the rock. Just follow my lead, Fidget. When that boat carrying visitors and supplies pulls up to the dock, we'll blend right in with the people getting off of it. The two repugnant rascals wait for just the right moment and then surreptitiously slip out of their hiding place and blend right in with the disembarking visitors. They walk right up to a man who's overseeing the arrivals and shake his hand. Ah, you must be Dr. Steve. Yes, and you must be Mr. Blackwell, Warden of Alcatraz. You are correct, sir. May I say, it is a pleasure to have a fellow warden visit us here on Alcatraz. Uh, yes, uh, may I introduce my, uh, uh, vice warden, Mr. Fidget? How do you do? May I say, Mr. Blackwell, that your prison here has become a role model for prisons all across the country, and it is an honor to talk to the man who holds the keys. Uh, you do hold the keys, don't you? Yes, sir. Got them right here. Excellent. Well, as I stated in my letter to you, I'm hoping to observe some of your techniques here and then implement them in my own prison. Ah, well, yes. Let us go see what lessons you can take away from the rock. Right this way. It's not only lessons we'll be taking away, eh, Fidget? Keep an eye on those keys. They'll fetch a handsome price on eBay after we swipe them. Uh, this way, Dr. Steve. Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, Coming. Little do Dr. Steve and Fidget know that as they scamper off after Warden Blackwell, they are being watched by three very recognizable guards unloading supplies off the boat. Golly, Dr. Floyd, Dr. Steve and Fidget just walked right up to the warden and shook his hand. I saw that, Dr. Grant. It's a good thing we got here shortly after they arrived and disguised ourselves as guards so we could keep an eye on them. What do you think they are up to, Dr. Floyd? I couldn't say for sure, Chips, but I'm sure it involves Dr. Steve stealing something he can sell for profit in the present. He's pretty brave trying to steal something from Alcatraz. This place is pretty secure. You said it. What should we do, Dr. Floyd? Let's just follow behind him and see what they're up to. No doubt they'll leave an opening for us to foil whatever plot they've got in mind. Dr. Floyd, Dr. Grant, and Chips finish unloading supplies and then, still in their guard disguises, sneak off after Dr. Stephen Fidget. We now turn our attention to cell block B, where we find Warden Blackwell showing Dr. Stephen Fidget one of Alcatraz's empty jail cells. Sort of small, aren't they? Each cell is about five feet wide, Nine feet long and about seven feet high. They aren't built for comfort. This isn't the Ritz. No, I don't suppose it is. Uh, Can we go inside and look? Sure. Be my guest. Let me open it up here. As Dr. Stephen Fidget go inside to inspect the cell, a guard comes up behind Warden Blackwell. Excuse me, I I mean, uh, excuse me, Warden. Yes? Sir, there's an important phone call for you in your office. Oh, okay. Can you stay with our visitors here and answer their questions until I return? Oh, sure, I can. I mean, uh, yes, sir, of course. I'll make sure they're well taken care of. Good. I'll be back. Well, Warden, these cells certainly are small. I'd sure hate to be cooped up in one of them. Oh, that's too bad. Hey, what are you doing? Guard, open this door! Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. Dr. Floyd, how dare you? Open this door at once. I'd love to, Dr. Steve, but the warden has the keys and he's gone off to answer a phone call. A phone call conveniently staged by Chips. Well, you can't leave us in here. Oh, I can't, can I? I'd say behind bars is where you belong for all your treachery. Stealing my time and space travel device. Jumping through time, trying to steal historical artifacts to sell on eBay. Yes, I'd say you're a perfect candidate for residence here on Alcatraz. Don't be a fool, Floyd. Once the warden returns, he'll let us out of here. He probably would, except Dr. Grant is going to meet him on the way back and tell him you left the island. So as far as he'll know, you're gone. Well, when they check the records, they'll know that Fidget and I aren't inmates here. Hmm, I suppose you're right. But do you really think the guards here are going to believe two inmates when they say they aren't really inmates? 
I don't think so. You'll never get away with this, Floyd. Yeah. Oh, I think I already have. It looks like you two are officially out of our hair once and for all. Dr. Steve and Fidget, you two are now inmates of Alcatraz. See you later. No, uh, Floyd, you can't do this. Uh, Floyd? Floyd, come back! Has Dr. Floyd really defeated Dr. Steve for good? Could this finally be the end of all of Dr. Steve's treachery? Is there any way that Dr. Steve and Fidget can get off the rock? I guess they could get time off for good behavior. Oh boy, I'm sorry, I couldn't say it with a straight face. Find out next time on the radio adventures of Dr. Floyd! Episode number 804 of The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd starred Mora Quirk as Chips, www.moraquirk.com, and Frank Conniff as Warden Blackwell, www.cinematictitanic.com. Music for this episode by Jody Whitesides, www.jodywhitesides.com. Actual Alcatraz sound effects provided by Ranger Craig Glasner, www.nps.gov slash Alcatraz. Get your parents' permission and give us a call on our voicemail line at area code 818-332-3053. Episode number 804 of the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd is copyright 2010, Grant Pachoco and Doug Price. All rights reserved. And now, the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd proudly presents Learning More After the Episode. Well, hello there, everyone. Evil mastermind Dr. Steve here. Welcome once again to Learning More After the Episode. In today's episode, we visited Alcatraz Island. Now, to find out more about the island and its history, I called up Ranger Craig Glasner, who is an actual park ranger for the National Park Service on Alcatraz Island. Here now is part one of my interview with Ranger Craig. Well, hello there. There, Ranger Craig. How are you doing today? Just fine, Dr. Steve. Oh, that's excellent. Um, now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit because you are a ranger on Alcatraz Island. Is that correct? That's correct. I've been a national park ranger out there for 18 years. Oh, excellent. Now, um, in case anybody doesn't know, uh, could you tell us where Alcatraz Island is located? Well, Alcatraz is part of a national park called the Golden Gate National Recreation Area, and it's located about a mile and a half offshore of San Francisco, kind of in the middle of the San Francisco Bay. All right, so it's an island in the middle of the bay, and um, it has been uh, had many uses over the years. Um, could you tell us what the first uses or the first people who came to the island, what they were doing? Well, you know, there were Indians in the area before the Europeans arrived, and it might have been this time of year when the birds are starting to lay eggs, a source of eggs. Um, But it wasn't a very hospitable, friendly place. There were no plants or water. It was really the U.S. Army and the U.S. Lighthouse Bureau that first made use of Alcatraz back in the 1850s. It was the first permanently... A permanent U.S. fortress constructed on the West Coast, and also the site of the first lighthouse on the West Coast. That was 1854. And so what was the uh, army intending to use the island for? Well, because of the uh, cannons before the Civil War not being all that powerful or accurate, they were setting up three forts to protect the entrance to the uh, San Francisco Bay, to the gate, as it's known. And there was one over at Fort Point, which is now underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. There was going to be a second one across on the Marin side. And then in... A little bit further would have been the triangle, the third point of the triangle, uh, the post on Alcatraz, as it was originally known. Now, Alcatraz Island, of course, is is most famous uh, as a prison. So when did it become a prison? Well, it was actually the army that began using it as a prison. As early as the Civil War, um, inmates were uh, sometimes sympathizers to the south. There was a crew that had a ship that had planned to take over the forts and pirate gold to help uh, finance the Confederacy. Um, American Indians were uh, housed there during the Indian Wars in 1895. There were 19 Hopis sent there from Arizona for the crime of of wanting to raise their children the way they had been raised. Um, And it was actually the prison that built the large cell house at the top of the island in the early 1900s. It was, at that time, the largest reinforced concrete structure in the world, and it was was meant to house primarily uh, U.S. soldiers 
who were being convicted of crimes while in the army. And that's the building that the Department of Justice took over in 1934. And with a fairly significant renovation, uh, new mechanical doors that were remote controlled, guard towers and catwalks, it uh, reopened that same year, 1934, as the United States Penitentiary Alcatraz. Now, uh, to me, being locked up with an ocean view doesn't sound all that bad. Or, <laughs> or was it bad? Well, you know, the, the funny thing is the movies, which have generally portrayed it as being a horribly harsh prison, isn't really a, clear, a good representation. Many of the inmates that were there said they were treated with respect and they felt safer there than in some other prisons. It was truly, though, though this wonderful views of the Golden Gate of San Francisco, or Berkeley and Oakland, uh, Angel Island, a state park across the bay. It was those views of freedom that was the real torture of Alcatraz. Now, uh, when it was uh, mainly being used for a prison, what was a typical day like for a prisoner on Alcatraz? It was very regimented. Um, most inmates had earned the privilege of having a job. Uh, some of them worked in a laundry facility. The military sent over all their dirty clothes. There's actually a, a fairly popular children's book called Al Capone Does My Shorts because his first assignment when he arrived on Alcatraz was working in the laundry, doing uh, military laundry for the uh, local bases as well as for the residents on the island. Um, some inmates worked down at the dock loading and unloading supplies. Others in the mess hall preparing three meals meals a day. You were permitted to take as much food as you wanted, but you had to eat everything you took. Uh, otherwise, you would skip your next meal. Um, so the lucky inmates were the ones that, you know, six, five, six days a week had a job and worked on the island in one of the other industries. Uh, the unlucky ones, the ones that were being punished, were locked up in D-block for 23 or 24 hours a day. Uh, for punishment for whatever infraction they might have committed. Uh, but everything was very regimented down to the minute. Uh, almost literally, uh, your ability to go to the bathroom was determined by schedule. So it was a very strict regiment. One of the inmates I got to know uh, that used to be out on Alcatraz, a fellow by the name of uh, Whitey Thompson, says it was almost as bad as being in the Army. Now, we've talked about the prison on Alcatraz, um, but uh, as you like everyone to know that the, it's, the island is known for a lot of other things. And uh, one oh, of the yes. things is it's a, uh, a symbol for uh, justice for Native Americans, correct? Right. The prison closed in 1963, and it was primarily a financial decision, although the public's um, view of Alcatraz was not uh, real popular with what they shot, thought a prison should be. Um, in 1964, a group of Lakota Sioux tried to claim the island based on an old treaty. Now, you have to understand that at this time in the U.S. history, the tribes were being disbanded. There was a program, a federal program called Termination that began in 1953. And its goal was the elimination of all tribes and of all Indians in a legal sense. Um, that program brought many American Indians from many different tribes to the Bay Area. Oakland was one of the 12 or so relocation centers. And it was American Indians in 1969 decided to take over the island and claim it as Indian land. They offered the U.S. government $24 in beads and cloth for the island, which they thought was more than a fair offer since Manhattan had been purchased for about that much a few uh, decades earlier. They, they used humor to try to make their point known about Alcatraz. They talked about how there were no schools or hospitals. You couldn't eat the fish out of the bay because of pollution. There was no hunting on the island, very much like the reservations they've been forced onto. Now, what they wanted to do was build a university out there, an environmental education center, um, uh, an outlet for Indians to sell Indian-made goods, uh, crafts, pottery, pipes, things like that. And although they completely failed, despite 18 months on the island, what they did succeed in doing was in the end of the federal termination policy in 1970 in the establishing of a policy of self-determination. So if you ever have the opportunity to visit the Navajo Reservation or the Hopi Reservation, they exist today because of hundreds and then later thousands of Indians who made a stand on Alcatraz Island who were willing to break the law for something they believe strongly in. Now, uh, when did Alcatraz become part of the National Park Service? Well, you know what? That may not have happened had it not been for the Indians, because in 1969, it looked like a private developer from Texas was going to buy the island and turn it into, well, not quite an amusement park, but there was going to be a space museum and shops and things like that, a tourist attraction, if you will. That plan was very much uh, ended because of the occupation by the American Indians. They called themselves Indians of all tribes. In 1971, when the occupation ended, there was 
a move to establish a new urban national park in the Bay Area, uh, which is now known as the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. And Alcatraz would be added into that new national park and opened for the first time to the public uh, the following year in 1973. You've been listening to part one of my interview with Alcatraz Island Park Ranger Craig Glasner. Join us next time for part two of my interview, where I talk to Ranger Craig about some of the famous inmates on the island and a bit about what being a park ranger is all about. You've been listening to Learning More after the episode. Visit Alcatraz at www.nps.gov Alcatraz. Say, kids, how would you like to get your very own keys to Alcatraz without going back in time to try and steal them? Get your parents to surf with you over to the show notes for this episode at www.drfloyd.com and there you'll see a link to a special website where you can get your very own replica keys to Alcatraz. Once again, all the information you need is in the show notes for this episode over at www.doctorfloyd.com. Head over there today and set your imagination to fun! Clear the airwaves! Clear the airwaves! It's time now for the radio adventures of Dr. Floyd, Imagination Nation Ranger's secret message. Remember, kids, only children with the official radio adventures of Dr. Floyd, Imagination Ranger's secret decoder ring can decode today's secret message. You can get your own ring right now over at www.drfloyd.com slash store. Okay, kids, grab your secret decoder ring and a pencil and paper and prepare to set your imagination to fun. Here comes today's secret message. And here is the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd secret message for episode number 804 Between the Rock and a Hard Place. 3 23 20 3 14 1 3 22 9 8 3 17 15, 16, 8, 23, 18, 20, 3, 17, 18, 17, 15, 16, 3, 17, 18, 15, 5. And that was a secret message to you from Dr. Floyd himself. You can decode today's secret message only with the Imagination Nation Ranger's secret decoder ring available to everyone at www.drfloyd.com slash store. Get yours today and set your imagination to fun. (laughs) 